Man, weren't the 80s fantastic? All that sweet music, the cars that kind of look like garbage now, the arcades, the disregard for children, the businessmen doing coke on the beach. Okay, so I was born in 1994, so I wasn't around for the 80s, but I've always had a huge love for films of the era. And we got a lot of great movies in that time period. We got Back to the Future, we got Ferris Bueller's Day Off, we got Videodrome, we got Star Warses, we got... The Thing. No, no, the good one. And most importantly, we have a dark comedy that holds a special place in my heart, 1989's Heathers. Hey, será, será. Released in 1989 from director Michael Lemon and writer Daniel Waters, this dark comedy released to all sorts of box office records and came to be remembered as a class. Just kidding, it was a total flop and only gained a following once on video. It's not hard to see why audiences weren't flocking to the theater to see Heathers. The film is a little... What did you say, dickhead? I'll repeat myself. Dark. In the era of comedy movies celebrating teenagers, here comes one that paints teens as untethered psychopaths that don't give a shit about anyone other than themselves. Certainly a popular thought amongst the older generations throughout time. Hell, The Who has a whole song about people putting down their generation. This probably contributed to the movie finding more of an audience as time went on rather than at the box office. Teens went into this movie expecting something totally different than what they got and found themselves watching a comedy perhaps more suited to their older peers at the time. And of course, good luck getting them into the theater because they're going to have the same preconceptions that these kids did. It was kind of a no-win scenario. Granted, all those people who saw Heathers in the theater are a lot older now and probably appreciate it more themselves if they didn't at first or they don't and think it's trash. I can't read minds, but I can give you a statement out of my own. Heathers is a great movie. I have a few reasons for thinking this. I'm gonna list them off pretty quickly, or at least the most important reasons, cause we got a lot to talk about. Number one, the characters are great. Even if they aren't likable, they play to their characters well and you buy into the movie's world because of the tone they're able to provide. Two, the comedy lands most of the time. Again, this is mainly up to the performances. Two of my favorite funny moments include the- God damn, will somebody tell me why I read these spy novels? Cause you're an idiot. Oh yeah, that's it. You too. And this moment from a little after the midpoint. I can't believe you did it. I was teasing. I loved you. Sure, I was, I was coming up here to kill you. Three, the story doesn't go even remotely how you'd expect. Based on what you've heard about this movie, you might think it's something tied to a very simple premise. That's why I was so surprised to find out that this is entirely character driven. And since these characters are really interesting to watch, the story keeps the audience along for the ride. Oh, and finally, four. It doesn't paint a sympathetic depiction of a school terrorist. I have a list of examples that fall into this trap, but rather than go through those, I'd like to focus on one specific one for the next chunk of the video. And that is Heather's The Musical. <laughs> I'd just like to give a quick note on something here. I've actually been in a production of this show. I will link to that production. Despite my feelings on this musical, I had an incredibly fun time being a part of that show, and many of the cast are some of my closest personal friends. I have no complaints, and I am a firm believer that a great director and cast can make a bad script work. These very talented people certainly did just that, so please go check it out. Just, just don't look at me. Look at everyone else, but pretend I'm not there. Instead of me there, just picture like, a rainbow, Gary Busey. I don't know. This is exactly how not to do an adaptation. The best musical transitions infuse something into the original work that makes them just as memorable as their inspirations. Hell, sometimes even more so. I can't tell you how many people love the musicals Little Shop of Horrors and Hairspray, but haven't seen or sometimes even heard of the original films that inspired them. Is this a bad thing? Well, not really. I wouldn't consider either of these films classics. One is a Roger Corman B movie that is so unmemorable that Jack Nicholson is on all the DVD covers despite showing up in one scene. That's the best scene in the movie, by the way. 
fine. And Hairspray is fine, but for John Waters, it's just way too restrained. Both of these films were kind of middle of the road, which allowed a lot of creative people to come in and say, hey, what if we made it better? And they did. But the problem with this is that now people are just throwing whatever they can to the wall and try to make the next big musical adaptation of a cult film. You name it, there's a musical. Carrie, Shrek, Legally Blonde, Shrek, Silence of the Lambs, Shrek, the list goes on. Shrek. Not all of those are bad per se, but they all do feel pretty lacking in comparison to their source material. So there's making an underwhelming adaptation, and then there's making an adaptation that fundamentally ruins certain enjoyable elements of the source material. Oh, hello Heathers, w wh what are you doing there? Who put you there? What? Remember that list I gave you at the start of the video talking about why I liked Heathers so much? Well, this takes every single entry on that list and just fucks it up completely. Number one, the story goes exactly where you would expect. I can't blame the musical too much for this. It is an adaptation after all. If you've seen Heathers, you know how this is going to go. So you could say this would be better suited for people who haven't seen the original film. That is something I've been told. However, two of those people who told me that later went back and watched the movie and declared they preferred it to the musical, so... Take that for whatever it means. On top of all that, both Little Shop and Hairspray made story changes to make things work. You can watch those and you can watch the original movies and you can still be surprised because they don't exactly fold out the same way. So that's why I'm starting with this one because overall, you know, I can't really harp on them too much. But I still think it's worth bringing up because like I said, those two other examples did it perfectly fine. So it is doable. Two, the comedy sucks. Humor is incredibly subjective, I understand. But I think it's fair to say that when you make an adaptation of something that someone, in this case myself, really enjoyed and thought was really really funny, and in your adaptation you only ever leave them making the Big Bang Theory face? It's good. Smoke. Don't Just do it. Somebody's not. been dicking bitchy Some important bill. new information it's has come to light. Hours. Women are the worst. God, he's the Lord of the Rings tree. Then I think it's fair to consider that a failing. Now, in the show I was a part of, we were able to make a lot of this work because, like I said, these are some really talented and naturally funny people. They're wonderful, all of them. I'd love to give them a big Christmas hand. But if it takes that kind of extra effort to work a laugh out of the audience, doesn't that really say something about the script? And number three, the one that pisses me off the most, this flat out ruins characters from the film. This adaptation does two major things that I think completely destroy the sense of character that's so strong in the film. One, they give depth to a lot more characters. Now I know you're saying, hey, why is that a bad thing? Normally it wouldn't be, don't get me wrong, that's normally a very good thing in a script. However, they chose to give depth to the characters that the original film purposely doesn't give depth to. I'll explain that more in a little bit. Secondly, they establish the characters in such a way that sets you up to instantly dislike most of them. Let's take a look at our lead in both versions. In Heather's The Movie, Veronica Sawyer is one of the kids who's on the fringe of being one of the big popular girls but maintains just enough distance from them when necessary. You get the feeling she's just running with these people to make her life easier. She's just surviving. From there, she gets led astray by the bad boy without a care in the world, but as soon as she realizes just how messed up he is, she bolts and doesn't come back. She's even smart enough to trick him and save the day by foiling his plan. After it's all over, she doesn't look at him with any empathy. She looks at him as a psycho who made her his accomplice. She's the only one who's in the right at the end. She's a good character. Now let's take a look at the musical's version of Veronica, who from here on out will be referred to as Moronica for the sake of distinction. So with this Moronica, we see that she used to be one of the nobodies until a chance encounter brought her into the world of popularity where she promptly ditched her best friend. Wow, I like her. It sets up an arc, yes, but it makes the audience dislike the character. This is literally the first thing we see her do. It doesn't really get any better from there as she sets everything in motion by coming to JD's house and sleeping with him. She breaks into his room and violently sings about how they're gonna do it, and from there we get into the main chunk of the story. The series of events that follows is largely the same as what followed in the movie, but now you have the added knowledge that this character abandons people, breaks the law to get what she wants, and is wholly responsible for her own situation. As if that's not bad enough, they play up the emotional attachment through all these songs, and it's just so insulting. It creates the opposite intended effect for the ending. Veronica's the head of the school? That's sure gonna shape out better than the Heathers. I want to take away bullying. Jackson. So the musical does a pretty bad job of Veronica. How's JD hold up? Well, remember how in the movie he was the mysterious bad boy who broke all the rules so later when it turned out he was totally crazy it was a story turn that made sense? You know, it's like they were making a... Point. Well, musical JD is just a snarky guy who gets way too attached to the crazy girl who broke into his room and constantly sings about how... damaged he is. And the
I'm sorry, I don't keep trying to beat the dead horse. Tracks. It just keeps coming up, I swear. As if you need to be told this, this makes JD seem whiny and misguided. All this implication that he does all this because he's from a damaged home life is problematic to say the least. JD here isn't crazy, he's a scared kid. That's the main switch up outside of Veronica. Characters are portrayed much more like three dimensional human beings, which would be a good thing if this wasn't a black comedy about kids dying horrifically. If you're giving these kids moments of human revelations just before killing them, this isn't funny anymore. This is a tragedy. The movie came out at just the right time, before this was the new normal. This was a time where you could play around with this concept. Yeah, they could have gone farther and more extreme with it, but yet they stopped at just the right spot. Yeah, kids die, but none of it actually happens at the school. The bombing is prevented, and we know that the guy who tried to do it is just a sicko. Not someone who goes around talking about how damaged, badly damaged he is. Who wrote this? It's just always been strange to me that a movie that came out before this was such a huge epidemic actually handled the topic with better taste than either of the two adaptations that have followed since. The musical seems very interested in playing up the romance aspect of it, but I don't think they understand that that really isn't a big part of the movie. Like I said, Heathers isn't really a movie that's driven so much by a simple premise as it is by character actions. And so the part of the movie where JD and Veronica are messing around is actually relatively brief in terms of the whole thing. So that's the last I got to say about that. Musical botched up characters from the movie, but hey, let's talk about something unique to the musical now. The music. Now being a musical, you can actually make up for a lot of issues with the script if you inject these really good catchy song numbers that will make people buy the soundtrack, which this does not. Uh, they do that annoying thing where it's like, hey, everything that was ever said in the film, that's a song now. Big fun, just a saying on a shirt, song, an offhand line said once that I didn't even realize was actually in there until I went back and rewatched it. I love his God. Song and a reprise. They do that twice actually. You know that actually reminds me of my favorite song from my favorite musical. Guys and dolls, we're just a bunch of crazy guys and dolls. And hey, if you like these songs, more power to you. I mean, I like plenty of music that other people don't. So, it's really subjective. But I just can't get into these songs. They're so blaring and they sound way too generic. Okay, let me take that back. The number with JD breaking into Veronica's house toward the end is pretty sweet. But everything else just leaves my head as soon as it's over. And that's bad for a musical, because I saw Spider-Man turn off the dark once, and I still, in my head, to this day, have the screams of actors who fell 50 feet from a broken cable. You get the point, musicals are toe-tapping and catchy. This is obnoxious and loud. So those are basically my thoughts on the musical. I know that was a whole thing, but hopefully you saw some of my basic points and if you didn't agree with me on the musical maybe you could have at least seen some of where I'm coming from. So let's take a few minutes to talk about the newest addition to the Heathers family because I left the stove on and I do not want to go to figure out what that beeping in the hall is. Anybody seen the cat? Here's something that's much easier to talk about because I don't have to speak nearly as carefully. Also I haven't seen it. Wait you're probably asking why discuss a show I haven't even seen yet. Well because this was more about the musical but I saw this trailer a while back and I had a feeling I was gonna have to talk about it at some point. I think from the promotional material available and the few early reviews, it's easy to put out a guess as to what this series is going to be like, and I'd just like to give my thoughts. So what are my thoughts? Well, surprisingly, it looks like it's actually going to be kind of... I was trying to do one of those fake out jokes, but my body wouldn't even let me finish the sentence. Yeah, this show is going to be trash. I could be wrong. They could do something really great with it. But these early reports saying that it goes so far past the point of the film to an actual offensive degree don't exactly come as a surprise. I mean, what could possibly go wrong in saying that marginalized groups are now the popular kids and it's the normals who have to fight back? Have you been to a high school? Now that could be an interesting idea to explore in its own movie, but in Heathers, the movie where people are getting poisoned and shot and almost blown up, that's the one you want to make more inclusive? It seems like they're gearing up for some real bad taste here, right? If you forget that Heathers is about what it's about, this isn't a bad thing. Opening up the diversity in a show about bullying, I think that's actually a really good idea, because obviously not everybody goes through the same stuff with that. But it becomes a bad idea when you decide that the only place you're going to diversify is in the villains. Because you're basically saying to everybody else, hey, look at all us normals, aren't we so great? Look at all these weird people clinging to labels. This is what's popular now. Can you believe it? We should just kill all of them. I really hope I never meet who created this show because I just have so many fucking questions. And really, that's all I have to say about it. It'll probably be pretty bad, and if it's really as shockingly disgusting as it's being rumored, I will probably make another video talking about it. It'd be fun to talk about a series and like its whole span, you know, start to finish rather than the one episode stuff I typically do on my other show, so I'd actually be really interested in that. Let me know if you guys like to see that when it comes out. Or I'll probably just make it anyway because I've been doing these videos every week, so if you see a little video pop up, 
up in your subscription box. I was right about Heather's. You'll know what that's about. It's often argued that Heather's couldn't be remade in today's climate, which is weird because they keep trying to. The main reason people say this is... Well, I mean, they have a point. I think it's clear that we've moved on from when Heather's hit screens, and now we know that this isn't a joke. This is a real nightmare that far too many high school kids always have in the back of their heads. It wasn't that long ago that I was in high school, and even then we had our fears. This is just a new reality for so many kids today. Movies like Heather's get a bad rap. You know, those movies that hold a lot of entertainment, but have a few problematic issues that have since buried the film in public consciousness. But unlike some of these other films, what Heather's was, was actually a clever little subversion. Writer Daniel Waters always said that he wanted Heather's to represent how teenagers really are. Nick Jagger. I've never really known what to make of that. I can never tell if he just had a hate on for the teens at the time, or if he was saying that there may be the Heathers and JDs of the world, but there's also plenty of Veronicas. It seems he might have actually had some respect for teens after all. I mean, hell, Veronica isn't the only morally upright teen character. She's more there than most of the adults, too. Heathers can be a very cynical film, but there are many moments that illustrates it's not all doom and gloom. Sadly, Waters never went on to make anything nearly the caliber of Heathers, so you could just say that this is wholly unintentional, and this was just a flip. Also, we tried for years to get Stanley Kubrick to do the movie. How fucking weird would that have been? In the end, I agree Heather shouldn't really be remade in today's climate. The issues just seem too insurmountable to wring any comedy out of, and approaching it as a full drama brings its own issues. In the interest of keeping things trim, let's just get down to my basic thought. Heather's is a great cult classic that's well worth your time, and that's where it should stay. What Heather's was originally trying to do can't work in a modern context, because I think people are finally starting to see that these kids are the future, and we need to listen to them when they speak. Perpetuating that you only have something valid to say once you get over some magic number is wrong, and it needs to stop. And yeah, I know, this is an issue with the original film, but I think it's different when you're mocking the teens of the 80s who didn't have to witness this shit constantly, and then when you're mocking the teens of today who do. It's a good film, okay? And if you want to watch a more modern and tame version, why not go watch Mean Girls? That's a great movie. Tina Fey is a great comedy writer. Just watch that and, and be happy that that's not getting a... Oh god damn! Wow, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, this, this was kind of a, an experiment, I guess. Uh, this was the first time I ever really did a video like this, and it was a lot of work. It, it kinda, kinda drained me. This was supposed to come out much sooner than it ended up coming out. But I actually did really enjoy working on it. I would like to do more videos like this. Maybe kinda spaced out, just cause of how much extra effort they are. But, uh, it, it was, it was fun to do. It was, it was, it was really interesting, and, uh, I'm always looking to expand what kind of content I have on my channel and what kind of content is there for you guys to watch and enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like and uh, comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, maybe some other topics I could cover. Uh, that, that'd be cool. And if you haven't done so already, you could click subscribe so you could stay updated with everything I post as soon as I post it. And if you really like my stuff and want to help me out, you can go check me out over on Patreon. I'll put the link down below. Like I said, I'll also put a link down below to the uh, production I was in of the show. Go check Check it out. Uh, I really, I really mean what I said there. Uh, uh, that that really was a fun time for me, and getting to work with all those people was really cool. There were there's a lot of really good people on that show, and I think we really made it work. So uh, go check that out if you like. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you're looking forward to uh, all the new content I'm working on for you guys. Uh, there's the new bad movie touch coming soon. It's a uh, <laughs> Ooh, it's, uh, it's gonna be something, so, uh, look forward to that. I will see you next time, and, oh, and, uh, don't, don't write in the comments that Tina Fey, like, also worked on the musical for Mean Girls. I, I know that. I'm, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's great, and it was, it was just a joke to end the video. Just, don't, don't hurt me. <laughs>